Okay, let's unpack this. It still uh, kind of blows my mind, really. What's that? That you can now hold a fully functional Windows PC, like right in your hand. Yeah. And not just any PC, but one with, you know, a decent chunk of memory, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Right. All for around, what, $160, the price of a fancy dinner out, maybe? It's pretty wild. It makes you wonder, what kind of, like, Moore's Law magic are we seeing here with miniaturization and just cost? How is this even possible? Well, what's fascinating is exactly that question, isn't it? For years, you expected decent computing power meant a big box, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Big tower under the desk. And a hefty price tag. Hmm. But now, uh, thanks to better chip design, more efficient manufacturing maybe, huh? and just fierce competition, uh -huh. we're seeing powerful stuff squeezed into these tiny affordable packages. It sort of shifts how we think about entry-level computers. Absolutely. And, well, that brings us right to the focus of this deep dive. Okay. You, our listener, you flagged a really interesting bit of tech for us. It's the GMK Tech Mini PC G3. Ah, uh, yes, I saw that. Specifically, the model with the Intel Twin Lake N150 processor and that 16 GB of RAM. Got it. So our mission today is to really, you know, get under the hood of this little device. Let's do it. We want to explore what it can actually do, what you should know if you're thinking about getting one. The pros and cons. Exactly. And ultimately, does it live up to the hype? Is it really this budget-friendly workhorse? Mm -hmm. So we'll look at the key features, performance, and even check out what actual users are saying. You know, if you connect this to the bigger picture, it's kind of about the democratization of tech, isn't it? How so? Well, it makes you ask. Well, Do we still need those big, power-hungry towers anymore? Or can these little, efficient boxes handle most of our day-to-day -day stuff? Right. Good question. So let's dive into what makes this thing tick, then. Okay, the specs. Yeah, for the price, the specs inside seem, well surprisingly robust. Mm -hmm. We're talking an Intel Twin Lake N150 processor. It's quad core, four cores working together. Right. And it can boost up to 3.6 gigahertz when it needs a bit more, you know, oomph. Okay, decent speed. Then you've got that 16 giggy of DDR4 RAM. Think of that like the computer's short-term workspace. Yeah, for juggling tasks. Exactly. Mm. The more RAM, the more it can handle at once without getting sluggish. And for storage, a 512 GB PCIe M2 SSD. Now, what stands out there, I think, is the mix. A pretty modern processor and that generous 16 gigs of RAM. It is generous for the price. As you said, RAM's crucial for smooth multitasking. I saw an article, PC World, I think, called it about as cheap as you can get for a PC that can run Windows 11 at this point. Wow. That really highlights the value, doesn't it? It really does. And the Sin 150 chip, it's not just any budget chip, it's actually an upgrade. Oh? Yeah, reports say it gives like a 6-10% boost in overall performance compared to the older N100. Okay, noticeable then. And even like 15% better than the N95. So it's not just cheap, there are actual improvements in speed, responsiveness. Skip. And let's not skip over that 512 gig SSD. The fact that it's PCIe 3.0 NVMe, that's significant. Definitely. Much faster than the old hard drives or even SATA SSDs. Right. Think of it like going from dial-up to fiber for your computer's data access, mm -hmm. booting up, opening apps, moving files. It all just happens faster. Exactly. That move to NVMe SSDs, even in budget machines, it's made a huge difference to the user experience. Makes the whole system feel snappier. Even with the less powerful processor, yeah. Precisely. Okay, so the internals sound pretty impressive for the money, but uh, how does this little guy connect to all our other stuff? Let's talk ports. Connectivity, right. Always important. It's got four USB 3.2 ports. That seems decent, right? For keyboards, mice, external drives. Yeah, four Type A ports is pretty standard and useful. Then two HDMI ports. And get this, both support 4K resolution at 60 hertz. Oh, nice. Dual 4K. Meaning you can easily hook up two external monitors. Good for productivity. Absolutely. Spreading work across two high-res screens. Big boost, even for just browsing or email. Definitely. There's also a standard 3.5 millimeter audio jack, you know, for headphones yeah. or speakers. Expected, but good to have. And a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. Now that's interesting. Faster than standard gigabit, yeah. So if your home network supports those speeds, you could get even faster wired internet. That's a nice touch of future-proofing. Home internet speeds are getting faster. And it's not just wires, right? It's got built-in Wi-Fi 6. Okay, good. Latest standard, pretty much. Supposedly speeds up to around 600 megabits per second wirelessly. And Bluetooth 5.2 for all your wireless, deer mice, keyboards, headphones. Standard stuff now, but essential. Plus, here's a clever little design thing. Yeah. 
It comes with a visa mount. Ah, so you can hide it away. Yeah, screw it onto the back of your monitor. The whole PC just kind of <laughs> disappears. A very clean desk setup. That visa mount really speaks to the whole space-saving idea of mm -hmm. these mini PCs. Very neat. All right, so on paper, specs and connections look great. But what's it actually like to use day-to-day? -day? Real world use, yeah. Yep. Let's hear it. Let's look at some customer experiences, mainly from Amazon reviews. One thing that pops up a lot is how easy it is to set up. Oh, good. Apparently, it ships with Windows 11 Pro already installed. Okay, that's a plus. Saves time and hassle. No need to install an OS yourself. Right. And having Win 11 Pro adds a few extra features some people might want, maybe for light business use or something. Definitely lowers the barrier for folks who aren't super techie. And we're seeing a pretty wide range of uses in these reviews. Lots of people using it as a media server. Like with Plex or Kodi. Exactly. Plex, Kodi, makes sense with the dual 4K display support and decent processor. Handles video playback well then. Seems like it. Others are just using it for general day-to-day -day stuff, web browsing, writing documents, email. The basics. Yeah, the basics, and even some lighter creative things like basic photo editing or playing older, less demanding games. That versatility is really a key strength for these kinds of devices, isn't it? It seems so. They could just slot into so many different roles. Home, maybe a small office, lots of function, not much space, not much cost. Yeah, one user actually said they replaced an older Intel Nugic with this GMK tech thing and called it a winner. High praise. Praised the small size and said it handled everything they threw at it. Mm -hmm. Another said it was excellent for streaming media, online shopping, basically could be a primary PC if you're not a serious gamer. Makes sense. Covers a lot of common use cases. And get this, someone reported playing five YouTube videos at the same time with no stuttering. Okay, that's a pretty good stress test for multitasking. And loads of reviewers mentioned the low power consumption. That's a big plus. Saves a bit on the electricity bill over time. Yeah, that's increasingly important. Cost savings, but also, you know, environmental impact. We even saw some more uh, tech-savvy users trying it out as a light server. Oh, really? Like for NAS? Yeah, or network-attached storage, mm -hmm. playing with Unraid, Docker, yeah, that kind of stuff. And though one user did wisely add a note of caution, saying it might not be powerful enough for, quote, pure NAS purists needing heavy-duty features. That's a realistic take. You could do some server stuff, but you got to know its limits compared to dedicated hardware. Exactly. Now, of course, no budget tech is ever perfect, right? Huh. There are a few <laughs> things to keep in mind. Always trade offs. That PC World article we mentioned, it pointed out there's no USB C port. Ah, okay. That's becoming more common. So its absence might be felt by some. Yeah, maybe a minor inconvenience if you have newer peripherals that use it. It's likely a cost saving measure at this price point. A reasonable emission, perhaps. Also, while 16 GB of RAM is fantastic for the price, that seems to be it maxed out. No upgrade slots for more RAM later. Doesn't look like it. You can apparently upgrade the storage, swap out the M2 SSD for a bigger one if you need it. Okay, so storage is expandable, but RAM is fixed. Good to know. For the target user, though, 16 GB is probably fine for quite a while. Agreed. For everyday tasks, 16 GB is still plenty. And like we touched on, the graphics are integrated, so not designed for the latest super demanding 3D games. Right. Manage expectations there. Older titles, lighter games, probably okay. And we saw one user mention a small hiccup with Bluetooth setup initially, oh. but it resolved itself after some Windows updates. Just shows you might hit minor software quirks sometimes with any new hardware. Pretty typical. Drivers and updates often smooth things out. And finally, one person wished it had an SD card slot you know, for easy photo transfers. Another common omission on smaller, cheaper devices, you'd need an external reader. Right. So you put it all together, this GMK Tech Mini PC G3, the N150 version with 16 gigs of RAM, it looks like a genuinely compelling little package. Seems that way. Offers a surprising amount of performance, solid features, all for a very affordable price. Seems really versatile. Yeah, good for everyday stuff, media streaming, maybe even light server tasks, like you said. The aha moment here is really that you don't have to spend a fortune anymore to get a perfectly capable Windows PC for a whole lot of uses. Absolutely. It really shows how far budget computing has come. Mm. Strikes a great balance between cost and what it can actually do for a lot of people. And hey, if this little powerhouse has uh, piqued your interest and you want to learn more or maybe even grab one, uh. we've put an affiliate link in the show notes. It's https.amzn.org. 
to a 4JZSO1H. Okay. And just so you know, if you do use that link to buy something, we might get a small commission. It helps us keep doing these deep dives. Fair enough. And we really hope this exploration has been, you know, insightful for you listening. Yeah. If you enjoyed unpacking the details of this mini PC with us, please do give us a like, subscribe maybe, so you don't miss future deep dives. We love hearing from you too. Definitely. Wow. Let us know in the comments what you're curious about. What sources or topics should we dig into next? Absolutely. Which brings us to a final thought for you to mull over. Okay. With devices like this becoming so capable and so affordable, how might that change how we think about our computers? What new possibilities does it open up for home? Maybe even business use? Hmm. Good question. Things are definitely changing. They are. Stay tuned for our next exploration. We've got some interesting stuff lined up.